Hello everyone and welcome back to one more video on the Codility lessons. So we are currently solving lesson number five, question about genomic range query. It's not a very easy algorithm because it introduces a new way of dealing with arrays using their cumulative values. So let's get started. First, we have to consider DNA bases or nucleotides, A, C, G, and T. And for each, we consider an impact factor. These factors are provided as one for nucleotide A, two for C, three for G, and four for T. So taking into account the impact factors, we are also provided a string where you have a sequence of letters and you are provided the arrays P and Q where you have integers. And these are the starting positions and the end position of the slice of the string characters that we want to consider. For example, these are the indexes of each of the characters included in the string S. And if we consider the first positions of P and Q, we have two and four. So we're going to take the slice with the indexes starting at two and ending at four. Two and four are included in the slice as described by the problem on the website. And we have to search for the minimum impact factor that occurs within the slice. For example, here it's the letter C, which impact factor is two. And we're going to save this number as the first element of our result array. So since we have to iterate over all the uh, couple values of P and Q, we're going to have an array at the end containing all our results. Then we move on to the other couple of limits, P and Q. So here we have an edge case where we have the same number five. And in this case, the corresponding letter is T, which is at position number five, and which impact factor is a number four. So we're simply going to add number four to our results array. Then we move on to the other couple of limits, P and Q. So here we have zero and six, and this is actually the slice taking into account the whole string array. And in this case, the minimum impact factor that occurs within this string is the one for the letter A, which is number one. So we're going to add the number one at the end of our results array. And so at the end of this example, uh, the result array contains numbers two, four, and one. And that's what my solution function should return at the end of the problem. We can solve this using a brute approach, which doesn't look that bad at first. So the first step would be to replace each letter by its impact factor and then running iterations for each boundaries P and Q, checking within the considered slice the minimum occurring impact. And for each iteration, when we find the minimum, we push this into the results array. The solution works very well. However, it's not the most efficient in time complexity because for each couple of values P and Q, we have to scan all the string array in order to find the minimum so this way we are going through the array so many times, which leads to a high complexity solution. A better way of doing this is by defining four different arrays for each of the nucleotides with the same size of the original string S. All the arrays are initialized at zero at first, and then we proceed by reading the string characters and adding one in each array at the same position where the letter is occurring inside of the string S. So for example, here we have two letters A at the second position and the last position of the string. And this is where for the array A, we added one at the second position and at the last position. We're going to do the same for all the arrays. And this way, each array will hold the positions that are specific to each of the four nucleotides. Next, we are going to transform these arrays into cumulative values, meaning we are going to sum all the elements and at each position, we're going to write the sum of all the previous elements. For example, here at the second element, we have number one. Then we continue with number one. Nothing was added for a while, but then we have another A at the last uh, element of the string. So this is where comes another addition. You are adding another one at the end of the string. This is why we have zero here. Then at the first occurrence, my cumulative becomes one. It stays one until we encounter another occurrence of the letter A in the string, and then it becomes two. And of course, we have to do this for all the four arrays, for the four nucleotides. 
This method will make it easy for us to detect whether between two different positions we have a new occurrence of the same letter. For example, between these two positions here, since we have two different values of the cumulative, then we can say that we have a new occurrence at this position. If we take two other values, for example here, these two positions, where we have the same cumulative value, 1 and 1. In this case, we know that we don't have any new occurrence of the letter A between these two positions. Notice that this method allows me to check the variance of the letter occurrences without really visiting all the array. We simply compare two values and this is where it gets more efficient for my algorithm. Now for the provided example, we will obtain these four arrays after doing all the summing operations. And now we just have to consider a couple of values, P and Q. Let's take P equal to 1 and Q equal to 4. And we're going to compare within each array if the numbers are different or not, because this is going to inform us if we have a new occurrence of this particular letter or not. And since I'm looking for the letter with the minimum impact factor, I will start by testing the letter A first and proceed with increasing impact factors order. And this is very important. It's very important to keep this order correct. For example, here we have the same number for the letter A at this position. We have one and one. So we have no occurrence, no new occurrence of the letter A between these two positions. However, if I move on to the letter C, I have one and three. So I know that uh, there has been two additional occurrences between these two positions. And if I go to verify this in my string, let's go to uh, position number one, which is the letter A here. And let's move to the position number four, one, two, three, and four. We have two new C letters. And this is what this cumulative would, would tell us. It's three minus one is equal to two. And this means that we have two new occurrences of the letter C. And since the difference was found for uh, the letter C, which is the minimum impact factor letter for the moment, then I'm going to add uh, its impact factor in my results array without continuing the testing for the letter G and the letter T. So my solution will start looking uh, like this. For each couple of values, P and Q, I will test if P is less than A Q. And if it is the case, then I will push the number one, which is the impact factor of uh, the letter A, into my results array, which here I'm calling uh, by the letter R. If this condition is not verified, meaning else if, I will test if there is any difference between the positions P and Q for the letter C occurrence. If it is the case, if it's true, I'm going to push the number two, the impact factor of the letter C, and so on for the letter G and the letter T. And we keep on iterating over all the uh, boundaries that are provided in the two arrays, array P and array Q, until we have finished. At the end, our function should return the vector R, which holds our results values. There is an edge case here to take into account, and it is the case where the value P is equal to the value of Q. In this case, we just have to look for the position in the string of characters, check which character it is, and push its impact factor into our results array. So that's it. Let's go and see how to write this in C++ and then in Python. So this is our solution in C++. This is the brute solution and I'm going to present it here for information because it can be written in an elegant way. So uh, this is our solution function. It takes um, uh, three parameters, my string s, the uh, p array and q uh, array. Then I'm going to define two new vectors of integers, uh, the a vector which will be holding the uh, impact factors coming from the nucleotides impact factors of the of the string s and r will hold the results values so first i'm going to iterate over the string the characters of s and i'm going to replace a c g and t by their impact factors one two three and four so instead of having a string of characters, I'm going to have an array of integers. It's easier to handle this way. Then I'm going to um, iterate using all the values of P and Q. Just for a reminder, P and Q are of the same size here. If you have a starting point, you should always have an end point. And in the results vector R, I'm going to push back the value of the minimum. And this is where I'm going to use the min underscore element function 
of the algorithm library I'm including here on top. This function will be uh, searching for the minimum element, the minimum value between two boundaries that I'm going to provide. The first boundary is the beginning, the array A plus the position PI. This will be my starting position up to A dot begin plus QI plus one, which is the ending position. I've added the plus one here because the function min underscore element will exclude the last element in the comparison. And so uh, in order to take into account the QI position, we have to pass QI plus one as the last position. And for the brute solution, it works perfectly fine. At the end, I can return R and this is going to give you 100% correctness. But regarding the performance, it's not going to do well because Codility is asking also for efficiency in this problem. The more efficient uh, algorithm we have our solution function as usual as parameters the string s and two vectors of the boundaries p and q and i'm going to define a new vector inside the vector r to hold my results and we are going to define just as we have described in the algorithm explanation four different arrays four different vectors one for each nucleotide they are of the same size of the string of characters and they are initialized at zero then i'm going to declare new integers four new integers a c g and t these are simple counters we are going to use them to calculate the cumulative uh, values for the four nucleotides and we will start iterating over all the elements of the string s if s i is equal to a we're going to increment the counter a if the SI is equal to C, I'm going to increment the counter C, then the counter G, and then the counter T. And for each element that we are reading, we will replace AI by the value of the cumulative, CI by the value of its cumulative, and the same thing for the other two nucleotides. This way, I will have those four arrays holding the cumulative counters of the number of occurrences of each of the nucleotides, A, C, G, and T. Then we can move on and we are going to iterate considering the boundaries P and Q. And first of all, I'm going to test the edge uh, case where if PI is equal to QI, meaning if P and Q arrays are providing the same value. In this case, we are pointing out to one single type of uh, nucleotide. If SPI is equal to A, in this case, I have to push back in my results vector the impact factor of A, which is one. If not, we are going to test if it's a C or G or T, and we are going to push back respectively two, three or four, depending on which letter uh, is uh, in, in that particular position. So that's our edge case out of the way. We can continue. If it's not the case, meaning if it's not PI is equal to QI, if they are different, you have a starting position that is different than the uh, end position then we have to check if the cumulative values of uh, a pi is different or it's less than a qi if it's the case i'm going to push back the impact factor of the letter a which is one same test goes for uh, c g and t just to be careful here as we have said in the algorithm section we have to preserve the order we test the minimum impact factor first meaning a then the next impact factor, C, then G, then T. So we have to uh, keep this order of increasing impact factors in our code. You may also notice the second condition here that we have added. So it's either the counters are different or SPI is equal to A. Why? Because if the first position, PI, I'm considering, uh, contains the letter A, then I have no other occurrences between PI and QI of that same letter, then I will not find any differences between the two counters API and AQI. Although I have one occurrence which is happening at the beginning of my uh, slice. This is a kind of an edge case that is induced by the algorithm that we are building here. So we just have to be careful for this one. Maybe take a moment to think about it. And when we are done checking all the values of P and Q provided by the two arrays, we can simply proceed and return the vector R. In Python, the uh, solution is almost similar. We have our solution function. We have our string S and the P and Q arrays. These are lists in this case. 
I'm going to define an empty list R for my results and the four lists that will hold the cumulative counting for each of these nucleotide letters. They are initialized at zero at first and they have the same length of the string S. Then I can initialize four variables A, C, G, and T. They are initialized at zero. These are the counters that I will be using to calculate the cumulative values to store in these four arrays. Then we are going to iterate over all the characters of the, uh, the string S. Every time we find the letter A, C, G, and T, we are going to increment its counter. And at the end, we are going to store these counters in our arrays at specific positions. So AI will be equal to A, CI equal to C and so on. Then when this is done, when I have filled all my cumulative arrays, the four of them for the four nucleotide types, we can iterate over the um, the arrays P and Q, the positions, starting and ending positions. And here, like in the C++ uh, code, I'm going to start with my edge case if PI is equal to QI. And in this case, I'm going to test if the character that is pointed at by this position is A. In this case, I'm going to append its impact factor, which is number one, into my results list and so on. If it's a C, I'm going to add two. If it's a G, I'm going to add three and so on. Now that the edge case is out of the way, I'm going to check if there are any differences between API and AQI, meaning the counters at the first position, the beginning position, and the end position of the um, of the current slice. If it is the case, we are going to append the impact factor of the uh, adenine or the letter A. It is number one here into my results vector. And I'm going to do this for the four uh, bases, for the four nucleotides, A, C, G, and T, always keeping the correct order of increasing impact factors, just like we have explained algorithm section. And this or SPI here, it's an edge case that is induced by our algorithm, by our thinking. Uh, that was explained for the C++ part. You might go back and uh, just watch that. In brief, if the occurrence of the letter of the nucleotide happens to be the first um, position of the, uh, of the indexed slice, meaning at the position PI, we will not see any difference between API and AQI. All the values that are coming after this position will be the same, although we had one occurrence, which is at the first position. So in this case, we can take it into account by checking this condition. If it is a letter A, we can append one. If it's C, we can append two and so on. At the end, when this is finished, we can return R, which is our results array. And this is it. It's going to give you a 100% solution for uh, correctness and performance at the same time. Now, if you didn't get all of the details of this algorithm very quickly and uh, you didn't find it uh, easy, it's completely normal. Don't get frustrated. This is one of the, let's say, medium hard tasks that are published on the Corility website. So it's not an easy task, really, especially if it's the first time that you see this kind of problems. Uh, I would advise you to take a couple of days, even though you understood the, uh, the solution. Just take a couple of days to digest this, think about it rewrite the solution and check if you can tweak some of the lines in the code to rewrite those into your own way. It really helps to reinterpret the code into your own thinking. Other than that, just keep practicing and don't worry much. This is fun. Hope you guys liked it. Enjoy coding and see you next time.